believe that it's actually my last day. I always keep it real, you know, I don't lie to you. I'll give you some real lessons. So the big question, right, why did I leave my current company? Crazy man, I can't believe that it's actually my last day. For those of you who've been around since the start, you saw me like when I was a master's student, first week at this place, and now it's pretty much done here at least. Uh, but yeah, that's the journey, man. That's the journey. You just keep leveling up. And yeah, the new job's definitely gonna be a step up in terms of responsibility, in terms of pay, <laughs> and in terms of everything really so the main objective for today is to have a code freeze so essentially the nlp tool that i was working on is to have it in a state where i don't need to make any more changes it's just like in its finished state for now at least and then the tech team have a meeting with the tech team So guys, you know, on this channel, I always keep it real. You know, I don't lie to you and say you can become a data scientist in 30 days and that sort of a thing. So I thought I'll give you some real lessons from my first job as a data scientist, things that can actually help you to get ahead and tell you why I ended up leaving my current company. And hopefully some of the lessons will be transferable to you. So my first lesson, we let's talk about retrenchments if we're gonna be real. We, we all work in tech. We've seen all the layoffs, retrenchments, redundancies, staff, cuts whatever you want to talk about it and avoiding them as a data scientist especially if you're earlier on how can you avoid this and one of my biggest lessons is that you need to do two things you need to firstly be close to the decision makers in terms of your work the impact of your work is very visible to the decision makers of the company that you work in that's a, a really good way to differentiate yourself so you're not just a face that they see they actually know the impact that your work has had at the company and that will make you seem or it will show how you Useful you are to them and then secondly the other thing you need to be as close to the revenue as possible so what that means is you need to be working in the departments that are core to the business however your business makes money your work the closer tied it is directly to bringing in revenue for the company rather than doing let's say optimization problems the more indispensable you are and when it comes to making redundancies they'll never cut somebody who's bringing in more more money into the business if you get what i mean so as much as possible be close to the revenue and be less focused on optimization tasks or single hyper specific opportunities which might not be the most useful the other thing you have to do is the fundamentals man it's very tempting once you've finished learning and you're not actually in the working world you sort of forget your fundamentals right because you know how things work now and it's very easy to become complacent but trust me always make sure that you're brushing up on the key skills and the fundamentals don't get complacent in that manner but more important than the fundamentals anybody who works in tech will tell you is upskilling man upskilling you essentially have to take responsibility for your own career in so many different ways as a data scientist and one of those is always being proactive not reactive so proactively going out there to seek new technologies that will help the business and help you to grow as a data scientist. Because here's the thing, if you are somebody who's bringing new and novel solutions or even suggestions to the table, that's something that companies don't really want to let go. And it's also something that other companies look for. So just the fact that at this current company where I worked in, I was in a department called the innovation department. So a lot of that was bringing new ideas, bringing new potential technologies to the table. So because it was that innovative role, when I was applying, to this other company. That was something that helped me to stand out, essentially. And I'm gonna include a bunch more lessons in the newsletter, but I would say for now, the last lesson is you need to market yourself, essentially. Uh, and I'm not just saying this because I worked in a marketing company or in the marketing department or whatever you wanna say. It's because you need to show off the work that you do within the company. And how you market yourself is yes, showing off your work, so advocate 
advocating for yourself, basically. You have to be a little bit of a, not a show off, but you're keen to discuss your work and to show your work. So that's one way you market yourself. The better known, the better known you are, even within your own company, it helps you to grow and it also makes you much more important within it. The other way you market yourself is <laughs> through face-to-face -face interactions. So just talking to other people within your company will, it's kind of like a personal brand. You become a personal brand within the company and that's super important when it comes to promotions, when it comes to avoiding redundancies, just do it as much as possible, essentially. So the big question, right? Why did I leave my current company? Is it because of something dramatic, something interesting? And the truth is, no, it's not. Honestly, I loved working at this company. It was just the perfect place for me to grow as a data scientist. But two things, the most important is that it's quite a small company. And that meant that the data department is also quite small, right? And as a result of the data department being quite small, I didn't have other data scientists being around me to bounce ideas off of. So if you are like the only data scientist or one of two, maybe one of three data scientists in that company, it's very easy for you to get complacent because there's nobody there to challenge you, challenge your ideas, or even just to bounce ideas off of. So I needed to boost a company with a bigger data science department, which is what I have moved on to now. And that was probably the biggest factor behind that. And yes, admittedly, the new place has also given me a pay bump, you know, a nice little, no, pretty significant increase on my last salary. But yeah, the main reason is a bigger tech team, man. When I tell you guys I'm genuinely passionate about data science and I want to get better at it, I'm not joking. And to do that, it means I have to be proactive in taking steps like seeking out companies with a bigger data department so that I can learn from others rather than just keep drinking my own Kool-Aid, essentially. Yeah, so that actually is the primary reason behind that. Like I said, I'll be including a lot more of these within the newsletter, but for now, that's pretty much it. My leaving gift. Damn, I forgot to switch that off. Just like that, the day is pretty much done. My last day at work. So yeah, most of my work today was just essentially making sure that my codes are in the right place in a, that I could leave it in a decent place. That's not too bad. And I managed to do that. So tomorrow, all I'm going to be doing is handing in my laptop and, you know, getting my accounts deactivated, signing out of everything. But yeah, it's insane. I can't believe that. I am moving on to my next job and I got, oh, I got a nice leaving gift, a big stack for the curious amongst you where I'm at tipping point, Malcolm Gladwell, Factfulness, Sapiens, which everybody loves apparently. I might solve this one. Influence and clear mind. So I'm going to go through all of these over the next, what's it, five books, 10 months, eight months, something like that. I used to be a really thick reader, but I have a couple I need to finish now. And also realistically, I'm a busy guy. Unfortunately, I don't have as much time to read as I used to. But anyway, yeah, I feel like I should include the biggest lessons that I've learned from my first job as a data scientist.